Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Uh, today, a, a, a distillery I've not reviewed for a long time, really, not since the uber disappointment of uh, the Ard bag. I don't know why I say that in a different voice, it just feels like an implication to Ard bag. This is the Ard bag eight year old for discussion. Bottled at 50.8%, I am guessing from the colour on this thing that it's sourced mostly from numerous different stages of American oak, both refill, first fill, second fill, whatever have you. Uh, natural colour, no chill filtering. Some nice uh, little points on the back of it here about, congratulations, you've purchased a bottle of Ardbeg. Here are some fun rules. Um, Barney's pause that if you want to see them. And then there's like a little man in a barrel with a pineapple and a little dog. So, you know, quite fun. There are parts of Ardbeg marketing, Ardbeg's marketing that I love, and there are parts of it that I just detest. Um, fun fact about this bottle too, it costs £57, but there are distiller, there are websites like Master of Malt which have it in their shop for 150 quid, and I'm like, how? If it's still in stock at Ardbeg, why is someone listing it for, you know, more than double the price, 150% more? Um, but yeah, not reviewed an Ardbeg in a long time, and I was given a sample of this by Joe, who used to host the channel. He came up to Manchester to just uh, use like a work thing. And I was very impressed with it. I kind of wrote it off when it first came out because I just thought it's another hard bag. It's not expensive, which is good, but it's just another hard bag which is going to cost X amount of money and it's just something which won't be impressive because the ones I've been able to try, thankfully due to like sample swaps and bottle splits, have just not impressed me. I've just been like, well, okay, it uses a fun cast type, whatever. Um, the new Hypernova release, for instance, I'm still a committee member and I got through to buy that and was unaware that they wanted to charge £185 a bottle for something which is probably very young because they're going on about how smoky it is. Uh, only like 51 or 52%, I can't remember it because I didn't buy it. And I'm like, if you're going to charge me this much money, I want that at cash strength. And there's no heads or tails about that. And I think it probably would have been a better whiskey if they would have bottled it a cash drink. Haven't tried it, never will. Um, but most people will probably agree that if that was bottled at cash drink, it could, would have probably gained an instant a more unique reputation than what it has already. But nonetheless, we're talking about this one, which is the one for discussion. Now the irony is that I'm a, an unfortunate member of numerous social media, Facebook groups and things. More of a lurker than a commenter. And no one's ever really talked about this. I don't see people actually talking about it. So I wonder if Ardbeg have held forums for it, Zoom calls, things like that. Um, it's been in the glass for about half an hour. Let me move my head out of the way so you can uh, have a little look at the body on this thing. Very nice, nice and oily. Um, it's made the room smell like classic Ardbeg, which is always fun. But let's indeed smell that and see where things are going. Ooh. Now I've become a bit of a sucker, even though it's on the back of this label, coincidentally, I've become a bit of a sucker for all things pineapple based. Like I keep buying um, like crates of like pineapple soft drink and stuff because it's literally all I want to drink right now. And because this is I assume again, all X American oak. You can see that beautiful colour just next to me. There is a beautiful exotic fruit nut coming from it. It's not just pineapple. There's also like a guavery thing, passion fruit, um, mango. Love mango. There's a little bit of that in there as well. Along with some other nice sweet things. It almost has to smell it. It smells creamy, you know. but then lurking all around that and outside of this beautiful kind of focus of sweetness is peat smoke. And it reminds me very much, I've been getting into mezcal and tequila a lot more recently. And there is this beautiful agave-like smoky mezcal note to it. It's not the smoky star bag I've ever smelled. Bear in mind that, you know, 
did have an opportunity to try the five-year-old wee beastie. It's okay. Um, like it's all right. It's not a mind-blowing whiskey. I think the price point's a little odd. You would just buy the ten-year-old because it is a better product. Ugadal for me. I never got to try the original versions of Ugadal, so current Ugadal for me is still like quite a good whiskey, like quite a mind-blowing, smoky toffee pistachio sherry bomb whiskey. Um, Corey of Reckon always had mixed feelings about it. It's really young product. It's like seven, eight-year-old whiskey at fifty-seven percent, and then finished in French virgin oak. I think it just takes away a lot of the fun of that product. I'd like to try it before it was finished. I think it'd be a, a more interesting whiskey. I think. Um, but with all the Ardbeg special releases, and even that five-year-old Wee Beastie bottle, I always thought to myself, in order for it to be special, because we need to put that in inverted commas these days, because a lot of special releases aren't special at all, it has to be as good and slightly different, or indeed significantly better than the standard range. And people out there love Cory of Reckon, Fair play to you. It is a good whiskey. I just think Ugadal is better, but that's very subjective. Um, but for me, to be, to be a special product, it has to be as good as the ten in the Ugadal, or better. And the nose on this pulls me in straight away. I'm a sucker for refill American oak. I'm a sucker for peated whiskey. I'm a sucker for fifty point eight percent. So straight away, you have my intrigue. Enough of the smell. Let's taste it. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit missing from this bottle. I think it was filled to about here when I got it. <sighs> I've not had a bottle of Ardbeg in the house for a long time. And the taste of this is quite nostalgic. So, enough of my nostalgia. Taste. This whiskey hits. The first instantaneous note is what you want from an Ardbeg. The texture is incredibly oily. It just fills everything. Oh, excuse me. Lunch is repeated on me there. Following this oiliness is the sweetness of the nose. We get these kind of... It's less exotic, I'll be honest. But it's still good quality, like, apple-y, coconut-y, vanilla... Just nice bourbon cast notes more than anything. Just nice barrel notes. And then after that is the smoke. The smoke feels a bit delayed. But as it courses through your mouth, and as I'm talking to you now, it brings up... A lot of people get the note of licorice with Artbeg. I can't stand licorice. There are two things in the world I don't like. I'm not a fussy eater at all, but one of them is licorice. The other one is cinnamon. And I just don't get on with them at all, despite liking... All the whiskies that I like, which sometimes smell of cinnamon and licorice. There is an element of that to this, but I, I think that's just a really nice bittersweet note. For me, that's coming across more like a... Like, I know people don't like coriander. Uh, what, do you, what do you call it in America? You don't call it coriander, you call it something else. Um, can't remember, that's going to bug me all day. But with coriander, when you put too much of it on like... Um, as like a garnish on like a, an Asian influenced dish. It has that kind of salty, bittersweet thing to it. There's something else in there too, like fruit rind, like lemon rind, orange rind, when you get the pith and it is that kind of bitteriness to it when you peel an orange and it's still got that kind of slightly bitter white thing left on the segment. That's going on with it. It's dry in such a nice manner. Sorry if I'm waffling on a bit, but in all honesty, it is as good as the 10. I don't think it's as good as the Ugadal, but that thing's 
54 percent blah 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 it's teenage whiskey sherry finishing all that kind of thing but if you to put this next to the 10 in a shop i think it'd be quite hard pressed to like pick between the two of them because the 10 is 46 percent this is 50.8 it's guaranteed eight years old as it says on the label there. guaranteed and i like my peated whiskey a little bit younger big fan of non-age stated peated whiskey because i just assume it's a lot younger um and the finish is just long, like really long and a bit salty, a bit seaweedy. Um, there's something else in the back of this, which I just can't pick out. It is not licorice. Let's do it again. Ooh. Okay. For those of you that don't enjoy spice, there is a really nice note. It's slightly more ethereal. It, it's kind of like one of the, once you've swallowed the whiskey, I feel like there's a, there's a central point of like dirty swampy peat smoke and then on top of that is that kind of pithy citrusy thing and then on top of that is this salty thing which I really can't pick out which I'm trying to think about on top of that is like the lingering sensation of what happens maybe like even 10 minutes after you've eaten like a bird's eye chili um, I was in London a couple of months ago and we went to this amazing restaurant which was half Italian half Peruvian and we ordered the Peruvian pizza, which was essentially like a barbecue-based pizza. But it came with birds, eye chilies on top of it. And the waitress said to us, do you like spice? And I was like, oh, I like some spice. And she went, okay, well, I'll put the, I'll put the chilies on the side. And I was like, okay, fair. And I remember thinking, oh, I can handle that. At a slice with about four or five small slices of bird's eye chili on it. And it was hot. But the sensation after that, that kind of really soft green... Moving in again into like coriander, salty, parsley, not sage and thyme and those kind of cooking, like roasting spices, but more like garnish spices. I don't want to say this whiskey has an Asian influence because I don't think it does, but there are some just really nice toppy notes of like coriander, parsley, and the dying notes of chili but in a very pleasant way, not something which is scalding or going to ruin you. It's a really nice whiskey. Um, I've not reviewed Ardbeg 10 or Ugadal for a very long time, so I might add those to the list because it's always good to do re-reviews. Uh, have I reviewed Ardbeg Ugadal? I don't think I have. Joe definitely has, and he's definitely done the 10. Um, so maybe it's due for a re-review for sure. But overall, I think I'm gonna give that an eight and a half out of 10. I cannot remember what I gave the Ard bag. There's the accent again. Um, but this is impressive. This is good stuff. Like if you just want a young smoky whiskey with a long finish and a higher alcohol percentage than what most stand bottles are on the shelf, just buy that from Arbeg's website. Nice and easy. Um, don't go to Master of Malt and spend £150. Sorry for name dropping you, Master of Malt. But when I was looking for like cask specs and stuff, you guys were the first one that came up on shopping at 150 quid, and then I just logged into Arbeg's website and it was still £57 a bottle, so I was like, um, But yes, because I've not seen much of a discussion about this whiskey, let's start our discussion below. Have you bought this? If the answer is no, I would like to know why, because I've not bought a lot of Arbeg uh, special releases just because I found them too expensive, too boring, and not as fun as the label would dictate, because the labels are quite impressive. I just wish the whiskey would live up to it. Um, if you have bought this, 
what do you think about it? Do you have the 10 and the Ugadar next to it? Does it sit in between the two? Is it before the 10? I don't think it's as big as the Ugadar, but it's still a pretty good whiskey. Um, but yes, overall, I'm going to give that an 8.5 out of 10. Lovely, long... I will figure out what that slightly salty note in there is. Maybe it's just like a specific type of salt I've had at some point. Uh, like a smoked salt or a garlic salt, something like that. Uh, maybe it's smoked garlic, actually. Actually, it, it could be smoked garlic. Anyway, I'll dwell on that on my own. Eight and a half out of ten for the Ardbeg eight-year-old discussion. Um, bar means if you have, like me, been a little bit felt a little bit hard done by from Ardbeg just because of these very expensive limited releases which weren't as interesting as the price tag this one is actually quite good um, so yes uh, put all that below let's start our own discussion about it hopefully Ardbeg might see it that'd be quite good uh, but yes thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next week cheers